and it's quite difficult to answer that question because it's quite difficult to measure hate um, in all its various manifestations. And you need to have a good measure to identify if it's going up and down. Um, there are measures out there, uh, but they're not very reliable. So I tend to argue that we need to look at what I call the accelerants of hate, the kinds of things that happen to individuals and to communities that increase the likelihood of hate happening. Um, and unfortunately, the internet, I count as one of the biggest accelerants uh, that we currently have in modern society. Uh, why is that the case? Well, ultimately, the internet, social media, allows for hate to permeate everyday lives 24 seven. Uh, before social media, before the internet, hate would affect individuals in isolated periods of time. They could sometimes escape it. Uh, like bullying in a school, you might be able to escape the bullies uh, uh, and, and sort of escape it uh, by going home and uh, having the protection of your family and your loved ones. That doesn't happen with social media. It doesn't happen uh, with hatred on social media. It's a 24-7 phenomenon. And you can't simply just say, well, turn off the computer or turn off the phone. Um, because it's, it's almost a human right now to have access to social media and to have access to, to all sorts of information online. So to simply say, well, just turn it off, then it will go away, uh, doesn't, doesn't really carry any weight uh, in terms of a solution. Ultimately, you will have to turn that internet back on at some point, be it for work or be it for, for something else, keep in touch with family members, etc. especially during the pandemic. We've used the internet much more than we ever have in the past. And so to say to someone, well, let's just, you know, pull away from the internet to solve a problem, it's not a solution. So the solutions really uh, come down to, to th well, three things, I would argue. The first is social media companies have to be more proactive in taking down hate speech. Um, it's possible to do this, um, but it's, it is a huge technical challenge. Hate speech is quite nuanced. It can change over time. Uh, which means it's quite difficult to keep track of. Ultimately, that means a lot of investment, uh, a lot of individuals paid to track hate speech and understand how it changes over time. And currently, because hate is profitable, it keeps people attached to social media for longer. The more extreme rhetoric uh, you find online, the more likely someone is to spend online engaging, which means more opportunity to advertise to those people for the social media companies. And it means more opportunity to, to gather data on, on your behaviors online. Um, ultimately, what, what we end up seeing is hate expanding, proliferating on social media because it's profitable. And until we see a reverse of, of, that, of that sort of stickiness of hate and the profitability of hate, uh, we, we, we're, it's unlikely that we'll see major changes in the social media companies. And what do I mean by a change? Well, what Swansea City are doing right now and other football clubs are doing is boycotting social media. And what that does is bring attention to the issue. Um, it, it encourages others to take action and it's bad press. Uh, and the more bad press, the more action against organisations like Facebook, Twitter, uh, uh, Google, etc., the more likely that will that will harm their share price. Um, and if this if this becomes a, a global phenomenon, for example, a global boycott, if we could get to that level of organisation, um, then we probably would see more dramatic changes. So I think what's happening with Swansea City is the beginning of a potential movement. We've seen it emerge throughout, uh, you know, the Premier League in the past few months, and it's been going on for years. Of course, the attention it's getting now is just. It just uh, uh, more, it, it's essentially because of a spike in hate around lockdown uh, and people having more time on their hands and not going to games, not going to stadiums, etc. Um, if we see this sort of this this low level organisation expanding beyond just Swansea and a few other clubs, we might see some uh, some change in the in the social media companies. The second level is government. We need to see more action on behalf of government. There needs to be bigger fines for social media that refuse to take down content that we deem illegal in this country. Um, and uh, you know, proper taxation would be, would be welcome as well uh, of these big tech giants. But ultimately, currently the legislation is pretty toothless when it comes to forcing social media companies to behave in your jurisdiction. So I think ultimately, we need the will at the top as well um, uh, of government to, to put that pressure on. And lastly, we need people like me and you. We need people that, that watch the game, uh, that use the internet to, to stand up against hate. Um, it's one thing 
calling out hate and saying something has to be done. But that work really does start at home. And I think we should all become what I call hate incident first responders. So every time we see hateful rhetoric on social media, we shouldn't just tut, roll our eyes and move on. Um, we should actually engage and, and with appropriate safeguarding, uh, um, engage with that hateful speaker and tell them that they're wrong and tell them that what they're saying ultimately isn't appropriate and is not socially acceptable on the forum that we're on, be that, so, uh, be that Twitter or Facebook. Um, and if we all did that, en masse, the whole crowd, if you like, did that, then that would change behavior. That would, it, it, we've seen it offline. Once the masses express their, their genuine uh, disapproval of, of something like hate speech uh, and reinforce it over and over again, we see a reduction in that hate speech. So I think it, it does start at home uh, with, with, with the support of what the social media companies can do by removing the worst hate speech and what the government can do to encourage them to do that in terms of fining them uh, uh, and, and the like. Um, we could see the beginnings of a solution, but there's a lot of coordination that needs to happen there. Um, but I think a message I would, I would express to the fans, if the fans are finding this incredibly distasteful and they should do, then they need to start standing up for their players uh, and, and using counter-narratives and counter-speech against the hateful, hateful speakers.